Hey everyone, Adam Shaw here from Bravura Media Company. Today we've got another vintage map for you guys. We've got a bird's eye perspective map of Ottawa, Canada that was originally produced in 1895. As you can see, it is a bird's eye perspective map in that we get to see building architecture, changes in landscape, we get to see waterways, we get to see ships, we get to see vegetation, we get to see the city of Ottawa in a three-dimensional perspective. We're going to zoom in, kind of explore and examine this vintage map. But before we do, let's kind of go over a historical background of Ottawa, Canada. Uh, with the draining of the Champlain Sea around 10,000 years ago, the Ottawa Valley became habitable. The area was used for wild edible, uh, harvesting, hunting, fishing, trade, travel, uh, and camps for over 6,500 years by local populations. The area has three major rivers that meet, making it an important trade and travel area for pretty much thousands of years. The Algonquins called the Ottawa River Kichisibi or Kichisipi, meaning Great River or Grand River. Etienne Brule, the first European to travel up the Ottawa River, passed by Ottawa in 1610 on his way to the Great Lakes. Three years later, Samuel de, de Champlain wrote about the waterfalls of the area and about his encounters with the Algonquians who had been using the Ottawa River for centuries. Philemon Wright, a New Englander, created the first settlement in the area on March 17th I'm sorry, March 7th, 1800, on the north side of the river across from Ottawa and Hull. He, with five other families and 25 laborers, set about to create an agricultural community called Wrightsville. Wright pioneered the Ottawa Valley timber trade, soon to be the area's most significant economic activity, by transporting timber by river from the Ottawa Valley to Quebec City. Bytown, Ottawa's original name, was founded as a community in 1826 when hundreds of land speculators were attracted to the south side of the river when news spread that British authorities were immediately constructing the northerly end of the Redo Canal military project at that location. A year after the accumulation of this community of Bytown, the settlement uh, would be named uh, after the British military engineer Colonel John By, who was responsible for the entire Redo Waterway construction project. Thus, we have Bytown as the prequel to what we know as Ottawa. The military purpose of the canal, the Redo Canal, was to provide a secure route between Montreal and Kingston on Lake Ontario bypassing the stretch of the St. Lawrence River bordering the state of New York that had left the British forces easily exposed to American fire during the War of 1812. Colonel John By set up military barracks on the site of today's Parliament Hill. He also laid out the streets of the town and created two distinct neighborhoods named Upper Town, west of the canal, and Lower Town, east of the canal. Bytown's population grew to 1,000 as the Redo Canal was being completed in 1832. When 1855 rolled around, Bytown was renamed what we know today as Ottawa and incorporated as a city. On New Year's Eve 1857, Queen Victoria, as a symbolic and political gesture, was presented with the responsibility of selecting a location for the permanent capital of the province Canada. In reality, though, Prime Minister John MacDonald had been assigned this selection process to the executive branch of the government. The quote-unquote Queen's Choice, so the Queen wasn't really choosing, it was other people, but she was doing it symbolically, uh, turned out to be a small frontier town of Ottawa uh, for two main reasons. First, Ottawa's isolated location uh, is a 
was a backcountry area surrounded by dense forest uh, far from the Canadian U.S. border and situated uh, on a cliff face that made it more defensible from attack. Second, Ottawa was located approximately midway between Ontario and Kingston and Montreal and Quebec City. Additionally, despite Ottawa's regional isolation, it had, it had seasonal water transportation access to Montreal over the Ottawa River and, the Kings, and to Kingston via the Redo Waterway. By 1854, it also had a modern all-season railway that carried passengers, lumber, and supplies. Also, the small size of the town at the time made many believe that it would be less prone to politically motivated mobs as had happened in previous Canadian capitals. In this area, the in this era, the 1850s time frame, large sawmills began to be began to be erected by entrepreneurs known as lumber barons, for which these mills were recognized at, as as some from some as the largest in the world. The original parliament buildings, which included the center, the centra, uh, east and west blocks, were constructed right around between the 1859 and 1865 range. Public transportation began in 1870 with a horse car system overtaken eventually in the 1890s by a vast electric streetcar system. By 1885, Ottawa was the only city in Canada whose downtown streetlights were powered entirely by electricity. So that kind of gives you a background history and timeline to the evolution of Ottawa. Let's dive right in, kind of explore and examine uh, this map. This is an 1895 map. So we, we earlier just said that uh, in 1885, Ottawa was the only city in Canada whose downtown was powered by streetlights. Um, so we're probably going to be able to see this, see some of those aspects on this map. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I would think, I haven't explored this map fully, but certainly we've got fence lines. If we zoom in, we don't have any labeled locations, unfortunately. We can certainly see street names. Oh, and remember we talked about the streetcars? Uh, public transportation began in 1870. Uh, with a horse car, and then it was overtaken in the 1890s by a vast electric streetcar. Okay, there's our streetcar. This is an 1895 map, so that just kind of uh, solidifies that kind of proof. Certainly, we still see horse cars drawn throughout this map. And then we've got this waterway, this water canal right here. Remember we talked about the, the redo water canal? Well, here you go. Eat your heart out. The map is a little bit disjointed because it was folded, but we, you know, we've done the best we could to try to uh, put it back together. As you can see, um, we can obviously see this is this is a state house right here, right next to the canal. It looks like we've got a flag at the top. We can see the waterway, which looks quite nice. It's illustrated. We can see boats. Look at the logs. Remember we talked about how important the canal was and this area was for transporting logs? Look at the ships pulling logs. We also talked about the railway. Uh, the railway w was very important in terms of transporting people uh, and goods as well. You can see the railway off in the distance. I really wish uh, more locations were labeled. Remember we talked about the streetcar? There's another streetcar right there labeled. Look at that. We've got uh, someone who wrote Drant Brothers. That's what it looks like on the top of that building. Interesting. Um, we can see a smokestack off on Florence Street, off in the distance. That probably is either a mill or some some sort of manufacturing. Very close to a streetcar rail line. We can see the streetcar rail line kind of extend out in the city. We can see where these lines were. Spark Street. Oh, man, I really wish they had locations labeled because, I mean, they're they're certainly they're, they're well illustrated on here. But we don't get that that joy of here's a real depot. 
can see a rail depot. We can see goods being transferred down here. This is on, it looks like Catherine Street. Look at that. That looks like a stack of timber right by a rail line. Right there. Very interesting. And that is, that's by Catherine Street as well. That looks like there was a depot right around there. So I, I do videos for metal detectors and people who do metal detecting. And I kind of look up old maps and locations. I, I, we get also, um, this is kind of cool on this map. We get kind of a uh, street view of these different buildings. And remember when we talked about the streetcars? Well, there, there's one right there. Powerhouse Ottawa Electric Street Railway. Pretty cool. Let me get that perspective. Okay, we've got, okay, wow. We get address locations, Spark Street. Let's look at that brother. Let's, there's got to be, Grant Brothers. Okay, 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 now I'm getting excited. <laughs> I have to calm down. Uh, okay, these Grant Brothers right here, that's that building illustrated right there. And if we pull back, that's what it looked like on the street. That's how it's illustrated. Grant, it's a hardware store. Hardware merchants. That is just plain out cool that we're able to do that. See, man, these the one thing these bird's eye perspective maps should have done, numbered locations, street view like this. That's interesting we get to see that. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of Stroud's Tea Stores. That's interesting. Spark Street. A lot, a lot's on Spark Street. There's another one, 260 Spark. Ottawa. Remember we saw that factory off in the distance? What is that? Florence? Do we have a Florence Street? There's another Spark Street. Busy. Another one. They're all, a lot of these are on... Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah. Corner of Spark Street and O'Connor. Queen Street. Here's Queen Street. Alberta. Alberta Street. I don't see a Florence. Amazingly. Oh, there's a redo. I'm guessing that's right by the canal. Palace Furniture. Wellington. I saw Wellington. Wellington's right here. What is this? Let's take a look at Wellington. Okay, Stone House, uh, Chamberlain, and Carriages. We can see, uh, it looks like a church off in the background. Let's see if we can find this. Right by the rail car. The rail car would be in front. So. Oh, wow. What is that? We got a labeled location right there. D-R-M-E. That's okay. So we, this is Spark Street on the other side of Wellington. We're gonna look up all the other ones. I'm sure that is a labeled location. Very hard to read that out, but Wellington. There's a furniture store somewhere on Wellington. Here's Redo. I was wrong about Redo. Redo Street's down uh, to the south of the canal, somewhat. Come on, Wellington Street. Where are so we've got, it looks like manufacturers. I don't know if the furniture store, it's somewhere on the street. We, we saw a rail car. My guess is, since we saw a rail car in that photo, in that kind of street view, anywhere from uh, Bank Street going up to here, that furniture would exist. I, yeah, it's just... A little bit rough. Oh, I'm sorry, the carriage. It's not a furniture store. It's a carriage. They got a smokestack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. They got a smokestack. My guess is right here, guys. It's right here. They got a smokestack right here. It looks like there's a church off in the background. It looks like there's a, a waterway off behind it. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's the waterway. Yep. So that was a carriage house. And you look off in the distance. Sorry it took a little bit of time, but that that's a carriage house. And we can see the railway is right there. And that is right at the end of Spark Street. Right here. And what is this? Uh, 
I can't read that name. What is that? Uh, concession? I, is that concession or something? Uh, uh, street at right over here. It's by Bay Street. If you go to if you go Bay Street and you go a little bit north and you're on Wellington, th that is a carriage manufacturer. Pretty cool. So I mean, it's you have to kind of decipher when you're looking at these old maps. You got to kind of use point of interests and uh, you to kind of figure out what these buildings are and, and where they are. Rudu Street. I've got 103 and 105 Wellington. Which one was this? This is a 355, so that's way up. 105, that's a wholesale retail. Workman Company, wholesale retail. Um, looks like there were two shops. Alexander Hardware, Workman, and... Okay. Alexander Hardware. That looks like... Lower Wellington, probably, I would say, around here, considering 300 was the carriage house up there, and it didn't have a railway in front, so probably one of these buildings, and unfortunately, it's not really labeled that well, so, yeah, it's it's just hard deciphering through these maps, but certainly we get we get some really cool information uh, on this map by just looking at the the building architecture. Here's a mill. Where where is this mill? Bank Street. We saw Bank Street. Where are you? Right here, Bank Street. And it looks like where is this mill? Oh, do, is this the mill? Mortimer. Oh, ah, Bank Street Novelty, word, wow, my goodness, Jay O'Connor, there's a couple O'Connor mills, so let's look on Bank Street, okay, O'Connor Street, I see O'Connor a lot, okay, uh, there's a smokestack right there, smokestack right there, there, my guess. Ah, boy. That's. Uh, I'm gonna make a guess where that mill is. My guess is they would put that mill right by the railway. That's it right there. Right by Catherine Street. Let's look. Did we get a number? Two eighty nine. We can see sort of in the background, maybe, what is this? Okay, now we're lumber. This looks like a lumber yard, dress lumber. And this looks like a street rail car. Yeah, it looks like lumber. You had lumber stacks right off the side. If we, we see that right there, my best guess, I mean, right there. Considering they had kind of a lumber yard, it's got to be in the, this vicinity. The, the lumber yard is too prevalent. And if you look at the rest of Bank Street, I mean, there's just, you don't see any lumber yards. You don't see any. You follow Bank Street all the way down. That's the only location. So, th this is how you investigate these old maps. You, you got to be a kind of a detective when you, when you look at them. And I know it's dragged on, but it's really hard to decipher when they don't label. And it's you got to look for a little clues. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about Ottawa and investigating this map. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do videos like these all the time where we investigate old maps. We talk about the history of various cities, cities throughout Canada, cities throughout the United States, the world. We talk about uh, historical wars. Uh, we really go, we do biographies. We go into everything. So if you like history and you like maps, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about this map or the history of Ottawa. Like this video, share this video, and I will see you guys soon. Okay, take care. All right, bye.